Hello everyone, welcome to day 26 of April Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. My name is Sanchez Dodeja, I am working as software developer for at Adobe and today I present day 668 of daily lead code question. The problem that we have in today is minimum cost to connect all points. Here in this question we are given an array of points that represents the coordinate system in a 2D plane where each point has two aspects. The first one is its X coordinate, the next one is its Y coordinate. What we need to do, we need to identify the minimum cost to make sure that all points gets connected. And how do we calculate the distance between these any two points? It's given by the Manhattan distance formula, which is specified over here. So there's another important constraint that the question also tells us that all points are connected if there is exactly one simple path between them. So this is equally important. This tells that there should be no cycle that should be developed while connecting those points. Here they have provided us with an example. I'll be walking you through this example as well as the algorithm to go about it Why the presentation. So let's quickly hop onto it. Lead code 1584, minimum cost to connect all points. It's a medium level question on lead code and I totally feel the same. Also, we will learn a new concept today, which I haven't talked about in the past, which is minimum spanning tree identification in case if you have any doubt understanding today's question or if you want to ask anything from me in general please feel free to ping on the telegram group or the discord server of coding decoded both the links are mentioned in the description below so now let's get started here i've taken a slightly different example to what was specified in the question let's assume we are given four nodes one two three and four what we are interested in finding out is the minimum spanning tree connecting all these four nodes and not forming the cycle. Also, we are given the distance between each node to another node. For example, two is connected with one by five unit of distance, two is connected by three by two unit of distance, two is connected by four by seven unit of distance. And uh, this distance can be Manhattan distance or any other distance formula that might be specified in the question. What we are looking for is a general approach for finding the minimum spanning tree algorithm. Let's get started. So let's ask ourselves what would be that minimum spanning tree that will be formed in this example. It would be 1 connected with 4 by this path. Then we have 4 connected by 3 by this path. Then we have 3 connected by 2 by this path. So the total length of the minimum spanning tree would be 2 plus 3 plus 1 which is 6 units. And you can, uh, you can see that all the nodes get connected by this path. We have 1, we have 4, we have 3, we have 2. Now comes the question, how can we build the algorithm around it? So let's get started. The first and the foremost thing that I'm going to do is to create a min heap. Why min heap? Because we are interested in finding out the minimum spanning tree that will give us the minimum distance across all the points. So let's shoot for creating a min heap and each element of this min heap will have three parameters. The first one is the starting index. The second one is the ending index or the ending ID. And the third one is the distance between the starting node and the ending node. So D represents that. And to start the iteration, what will I do? I'll simply go ahead and add 1 comma 1 comma 0 onto the min heap. Why 1 comma 1 comma 0? Because the cost for traveling from one unit to one unit is zero. And this is needed in order to start the iteration, start the process of building the min heap. Also remember, since we created a min heap, Whenever I'll pull out elements from it, the one which has least distance will be extracted first. Along with this, we'll also create a hash set that will help us keep track of the nodes that I have seen or visited in the past. It's similar to any generic visited set that we create in BFS or DFS traversal. And by default, it will be empty. Now let's start the iteration. And the element that we see happens to be 1 comma 1 comma 0. There is only one element in the min heap. So we'll pull it out. And uh, along with this, we should also create a variable named as cost. By default, it will be initialized to 0. So when we pull out this element, what do we see? We see the ending node of this element, which here in this case happens to be 1. Is 1 visited in the past? No, it's not visited in the past. So let's go ahead and add 1 to it. Along with this, we'll simply extract the distance value. Here in this case, it's 0. So we'll add this distance to the total cost. 0 plus 0 is still 0. The cost remains the same. Along with this, what we are going to do, we'll try to identify what all connections this one node has with the rest of the nodes. 
So what all connections does it have? It has one and two, and the distance is five. So let's go ahead and add two one. Uh, one is connected with two by distance of five. So one is connected by two by distance of five. So we'll go and add this up. Next we have one is connected with three with a distance of four. So one is connected with three with a distance of four. Along with this, we'll also add one is connected with four with a distance of one unit. So one is connected with four with a distance of one unit. Also, while adding uh, the new nodes into the priority queue, you should check whether the ending state was part of the visited node or not, which we usually do in the BFS reversal too. So these three nodes have been added, and let's continue the processing. Uh, let's pull out elements from it. Which element will be pulled out? The one that has least distance. Which one has the least distance? As you can see, that this node has the least dist value, which is one. So this will be pulled out. So this is gone. And uh, since this is gone, we check what is the ending node of this. The ending node of this is four. Is four part of my visited set? It's not part of your visited set. So we'll go ahead and add four to it. Along with this, the cost will be updated to one. So zero plus one is one. So the total cost of the minimum spanning tree gets updated to one. Using this, we have established a connection between one and four that will be part of our minimum spanning tree final structure. And this is done. So far, so good. And let's continue the same process that we did at the previous step as well. What I'm going to do, I'll check to what all nodes is four connected to. So as you can see, four is connected to three nodes, one, three, and two. So we will simply check whether uh, one was part of the visited set or not. Since one is part of the visited set, we do not re-add this no node back into the priority queue. Uh, let's look out for the next node. We can see that three is connected with four by a distance of three. So this gets added. Three, four is connected by three by a distance of three units. So we have four, three, three, and the next one is. Four is connected by two by distance of seven, so let's add that two. Four is connected. Starting point is four is connected with two uh, by a distance of seven. Now, let's redo the same thing again, and let's pull out the element that has the least distance. So, which one has the least distance out of seven, five, four, and three? Three has the least distance. So, this node will be pulled out. So, this is gone. So again, let's pull the, out this element, and we will check whether the terminal state, the end node ID, was part of the visited set or not. It is not part of my visited set. As a result of which, I'll simply go ahead and add it to my visited set. Along with this, the cost value will be updated to one plus three, which is this one, and we have the cost updated to four. This simply says that we have connected three with four, so this gets connected. So far, so good. Now let's redo the same thing. Let me just change the color of pen. We'll look around and check to what all edges or nodes is three connected to. You can see that three is connected with one. So we will check uh, whether one is part of my my visited set or not. One is already part of my visited set. So let's skip it. We will not add it back. Let's look out for the another edge. Three is connected with four by a distance of three. Four is already part of my visited set. Let's skip it. We'll not add it again. This will help us avoid looping conditions. Let's proceed ahead. Next we see is three is also connected with two by a distance of two. This one. So let's go ahead and add three comma two, and the distance is again two. So this entry gets added into the minimum heap that we have created. So we have four elements in it: three, two, two, four, two, seven, one, two, five. One, three, four, and let's pull out the one that has the least distance value. Which one will be pulled out? This one will be pulled out. So let's delete. Let's pull this element out, and let's see what is the ending node for this. The ending node happens to be two. Is two part of my uh, visited set? No, it's not part of your visited set. Let's go ahead and add it up. Along with this, we will also update the cost value. So the cost value will be updated from four. Two four plus two, which is six. So the cost gets updated to six, and that simply means we have added this edge into our minimum spanning tree. Along with this, you will see that we have added all the nodes that were present in our initial data set one, two, three, and four into the visited set. 
and we are done with the traversal the cost value comes out to be 6 which is in sync with our expectation if you have understood this much you have understood the entire logic of minimum spanning tree and you will be able to apply it anywhere to conclude it further let's quickly walk through the coding section the time complexity of this approach is order of n square log n how that will come out to be that i'll talk about it in the coding part so let's quickly hop onto it I'll exactly follow the same steps as I have talked in the presentation and after going through the solution, you'll be able to apply minimum spanning tree algorithm onto any question, I guarantee that. So here I've created a min heap, uh, which we have been doing across multiple problems in the past. Then I go ahead and create a cost variable that will actually store my answer. Uh, by default, I want to start from the zeroth node. So I add starting node as zero, ending node as zero and the distance two as zero. I've created a hash set that will actually store the number of elements that have been visited in the past. Then I go ahead and create uh, uh, a while loop. If my while loop is not empty and my visited dot size is less than the total number of nums that I'm looking for, uh, if that is the condition that will help us identify any loop, avoid any looping scenarios, I pull out the current element from the priority queue. I extract its end ID. I extract its current cost. If my end ID is not part of my visited set, I'll continue the loop uh, because it's all, if it is already part of the uh, visited set, I should skip it. If it is not, then I go ahead and process the rest of the information. I add the current cost to my cost. I add my current node, which is my end node to uh, the visited set. And again, I run a for loop starting from the zeroth node up till nums. Uh, if my uh, ith index is not part of the visited set. I create a new element into the priority queue. I add a new element in the priority queue. Here the end node will act as my starting index. I will act as my ending index and I have created a helper method which is actually calculating the distance between uh, the end node and the ith node and I have passed in the points uh, 2d array that was given to us in the equation. So this is the helper method that I have created for calculating it. It's exactly doing the same thing as told in the question to find out the Manhattan distance between two nodes. Once I'm done with this loop, I simply return the cost variable. And uh, there could be cases where only the distance calculation formula is changing. The rest of the algorithm remains the same. So learn it by heart. So let's go and submit this up. Accepted. It is 52 times faster, which is pretty good. Now comes the question, how do we calculate the time complexity of this algorithm? Uh, so this algorithm will run for n nodes and at each node you are adding n more nodes onto it. So the total number of elements that would be added onto the priority queue would be n square. And for uh, finding out the min minimum element of it, log n complexity is needed. So the total time complexity turns out to be n square log n. And the space complexity of this approach is of order of n, where n signifies the number of nodes that we have. With this, let's quickly wrap up today's session. I hope I, I made sense to you and you thoroughly enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye. Your friend, your mentor, your catalyst in this journey of yours. Sanchit Tuteja signing off. Take care.